This is part three of Kara Winter's story. I think there's one more part left. If you missed the first two parts, you can actually jump in right now, or you can go back and check out the last two parts. They are embedded in the last two episodes of Survival with Fix. Or I have a playlist of just the lore segments exclusively. I think it's called Fixiverse Lore. It's easy to find on my channel. It's one of the top three playlists on the front page. So if you wanna check it out, if you missed any episodes, sometimes you might wanna just catch the lore to just catch up so you don't miss anything. Anyway, without any further ado, Carl Winter's Story, part three. I'm telling you, it wasn't a zombie, Carl said to Sally. Come on, Carl, she said. What else could it be? I don't know, but living on the farm, I've seen more than my share of the undead. This was something else. How do you know, Sally asked. She wanted to believe him. She did like Carl after all, but walking in the middle of the night, one's imagination could play all kinds of tricks. I don't know. Look, I saw its eyes. It wasn't a brainless slab of flesh. It was smart. Maybe it was one of the town kids waiting to play a trick on you. No, Sally, look. I, okay, I don't even want to think about it. How was your day? The two budding lovers sat and talked for hours. Sally had just finished her shift at the tavern, and Carl was exhausted from working all day in the fields. Still, though, young love feels no exhaustion. Carl knew the following morning was coming soon, and he would have to make his way back, across the bridge where the monster lurked. After avoiding for as long as they thought possible, the two said their goodbyes, and Carl started down the road. If he hurried, he still might get two hours of sleep before Paul woke him up to start his chores. Despite Carl's worst fears, the walk back was stressful but uneventful. He quietly unlatched the front door using his key he had borrowed from the hallway dresser drawer. The front door opened into the dark kitchen, still smelling the pork mother had made hours earlier. Carl slipped in and quietly latched the door behind him. As he turned, he heard the sound again. His blood ran cold instantly as he heard the same sound from under the bridge.